Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I've got some really fun Christmas shaker tags to show you. We're going to be using lots of products from the Tim Holtz collection, including the brand new frame tag dies, the bold text Christmas dies, and then we'll also be using some impresslets and sprays, the oxide sprays and the brand new Christmas holiday mica sprays. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by die cutting these frame tags. We're going to take that largest one. This is from the Tim Holtz Sizzix Thinlets Frame Tag die set, and this is a brand new die set. And we're going to be die cutting those out of some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. So I'll run those through the die cutting machine. And now we've got three, and you can see that beautiful frame that's created around the border of those tags. So now let's have some fun with our sprays. I've got two oxide sprays in spun sugar and picked raspberry. And then I've got the brand new mica spray for the holiday season in the tart cranberry. So I'll place the first tag in my spatter box and I'm going to start by spritzing that with a little bit of water from my distress sprayer. And then I'll come in with that spun sugar distress oxide spray and I'm, I'm keeping a little bit of distance from it as I spray it down there. I don't want to get too, too much. You can always add more afterwards. And now I've got the picked raspberry and I'm spritzing it with a little bit of that. Now I'll come back in with the water just to move that ink around as much as, or as little as you want to here. You certainly don't have to add more water. You can just leave it as it, as it sprays. But here I just wanted to loosen up that ink a little bit and then I'm going to heat set that with my heat tool. So I'm just kind of dabbing off any excess along the sides or the edges there. You could just blot that up with a paper towel as well. Now once that's dry, I'm coming in with the mica spray. This is again from the brand new holiday collection of mica sprays. And we'll be using all three of these. They come in a set of three, and this one is called the Tart Cranberry. And again, I'm keeping my distance there and spraying that down onto my cardstock. And you can see that beautiful shimmer that we're going to get from these sprays. And as that dries, I'll show you a bit later on how really pretty that looks. So now let's do the next tag. I've got two Distress Oxide sprays in tumbled glass and cracked pistachio. And then I'm using the Winter Frost Holiday Mica Spray. And again, that holiday set comes with three colors, the tart cranberry, the winter frost, and the fresh balsam. And we'll be using all three of those today. So let's start with a little bit of that cracked pistachio spray. And I did spritz a little bit of water before we got started. And then I'm adding the tumbled glass, just like we did before. And then I'll come back in with that water and just kind of loosen up that ink a little bit. And again, that's a step you could skip if you wanted to. I just like to blend the colors together a little bit better. So add as much or as little water as you like. And in this case, I'm just going to tap on that mica spray rather than spritzing it on like I did with that first tag. Here I'm just going to put that nozzle right into the container and then spatter that on. And just a quick footnote, you do want to make sure you shake those sprays really well. You want to move that mica around it it settles at the bottom of the container. So you want to make sure you shake it up really well until there's no mica at the bottom. If there is mica at the bottom, according to Tim Holtz, and I haven't had this happen, but it can clog the nozzle on you. So shake it up really well and always make sure that you wipe off the nozzle of your sprayer after you're done with your project. I just try to make sure I wipe the nozzle as I'm going along and then I don't have to worry about any kind of clogging. So there you can see that little tag up close and I'll give you a closer look at all of these at the end. So for the last tag, let's grab the Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide and the Fresh Balsam Mica Spray. So for this tag, I wanted to get more of a shimmery background. So what I'm going to do is add both of these sprays at the same time. So I started with the water then I'm adding the Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide, and then I'm adding the Fresh Balsam Mica Stain. So I'll add both of these at the same time, then you can add a little bit more water just to get that ink moving. 
and you'll see that this is going to have this beautiful shimmery effect to the background here. So hopefully you can see that a little bit there. And now I'm going back to that mica spray and I'm just going to spatter some on. So we'll have a couple layers of that mica spray on this particular tag. So again, play around with these, have fun, mix and match, add different colors. It, whatever you do, just don't get hung up on a right or wrong. Just play with them and have fun. And if you want to, it's fun just to make a whole bunch of tags at the same time. And then you can always go ahead and use those in the future for other projects. And once we start layering and adding things to these, they always take on a different effect anyway. So here I'm adding a little bit more spattering and you can already see that even though it is the fresh balsam, you can see that that mica in there is kind of a gold tone. So it's really bringing out the gold when I add the spattering. So I just love that. I think that's so beautiful. So now let's add a snowy effect. I've got some white gesso and a small paintbrush and I'm just, I added a little bit of water to that gesso and then I'm going to spatter all of these tags again just to give it kind of a snowfall effect. I'll quickly heat set those. Now for inking around the edges I'm going to my Distress ink and this is the Picked Raspberry and I've just got a foam applicator tool here and I'm just going to add that just to darken the edges of each of these tags all the way around. For this next one, I've got the Rustic Wilderness. And again, this is just a water-based ink that I'm using. And then for the last one, I'm using that Cracked Pistachio. So just coordinating these inks with the sprays that we've already used. I did decide that pink tag needed a little bit more sparkle. So I'm using my Mica Spray in the Brushed Pewter. And I'm just going to spatter some of that on. Again, I just thought it needed a little bit more of that silvery tone because we are going to be adding some silver embellishments to this a bit later on. And I wanted that to coordinate a bit better. So I'm spattering that on. And then we can go ahead and heat set that again. And then let me give you a closer look at how that brushed pewter looks on there. And that just added a lot, just makes it pop a little bit more. So just quickly going back to just cleaning off these nozzles before I put all these away, adding a little bit of water to my paper towel, and then I'm just wiping down each of those nozzles. So let's take some Walnut Stain Distress Ink and go around the edges of each of these tags. Again, I just wanna frame the tags a little bit better, and I'm just using my foam applicator tool to do that. So I did that for all three of those tags. So let's go to the Sizzix Thinlet's Bold Text Christmas Dies, and these are fantastic. These are going to allow us to make a really fun shaker element on our tag. So I'm just going to select three of these for our three tags. I'm kind of looking at ones that are about the same size, but you don't necessarily need to do that. I just want it to fit onto the tag nicely. So for the green tag, I'm going to use Happy Holidays. And I'm taping it down with a little bit of purple tape and just positioning sort of in that lower right-hand corner of the tag. And then for the blue one, we'll use Winter Wishes. And then for this pink one, we'll use Holly Jolly. So I'll run those through. I'm putting a little scrap paper down just to keep those tags nice and clean as they run through the die cutting machine. I'll run that through a couple of times and then we can pop out all of those little pieces. I'm going to save those letters that we pop out though. I think those would be great on another card. And I could even mix and match some of these letters from the other tags that we're going to be die cutting. So I'm going to set those aside. Now I've got some Lawn Fawn Clear Acetate. And we're going to create the window behind our sentiment because, again, we're going to be creating a shaker element. I just cut a piece to fit right behind those letters. I'm using some quarter-inch double-sided tape to tape 
that down so I'm just going to go around all four sides. I'm just removing the backing and then we can attach the acetate. And I did that for all three tags. Now, I want to put the centers back in the, the O's for these two. So I'm placing that letter right back into place. I'll put a little glue in the center there. And this will allow me to get my positioning just right. So now I can pop those centers right back into place. And then I'll remove that letter O. So this is a really easy way to get things lined up perfectly. And I did that same thing for the other tags. So let's add some metallic papers for behind our bold text. And I'm going to be using the craft stock metallic colors from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection. And I've grabbed a green, a red, and a blue. And I think these coordinate nicely. Now, I want to die cut these the same size as the tag, but I want to die cut it from the back side. So I'm going to place my die on the craft stock side of the paper. I'm placing a little scrap paper down just to make sure my metallic cardstock doesn't get anything on it. I want to keep it nice and clean. And then you'll see that that pretty framed tag effect is on the back side of the tag. So when we look at the tag from the back or the front, we'll see that pretty embossed edge. So now I've got the Sizzix 3D Impresslets. This is the poinsettia. And this die cuts and embosses at the same time. And now I've also got the Holly Berries 3D Impresslets. We're going to die cut these out of some metallic papers. For that holly and berries, I'm using the silver metallic from the Metallic Classics Collection from Tim Holtz. And then I'm going back to this Metallic Colors Collection to do the poinsettia and the leaves. I'm going to be using that pretty pink color and that green. And the silver, again, is for the holly and berries. So I'm placing my metallic cardstock right inside this 3D impresslet. I'm placing it on my platform, and I like to use a couple pieces of cardboard. These are from the backs of some notepads, but you should use the directions that are specific for your machine. This works well for me. You could also stack up some cardstock here. You just want to make sure it's not too tight as you're running it through. If it's too tight, just back it out and take off some cardstock. So you can see this beautiful embossed border that we get. So now let's grab that green metallic cardstock and do the same thing. We're just cutting the whole thing on this so that we can get those leaves. So again, I've got my two pieces of cardboard and I'm running that through. Now I'll die cut two out of the pink metallic cardstock because we're going to be cutting that down to create some layers, and I'll show you that here in a second. So this first piece, the green, only those leaves will show. So now on this second one, I want to cut the leaves away. So I'm just cutting off those leaves, and that will leave just that poinsettia. I'm just using my detail scissors, and I'm just following that embossing to cut that away. And then for this next piece, so you'll see that'll line up right over top there. And then for this next piece, I'm just going to take the center petals and you can take any petals from the center here that you like. I'm just going to take this little cluster in the middle, again, just to create some dimension for our flower. So that's how this will stack up. I'm going to use some 3D foam tape to stack these up. But first, I'm just going to give a little bit of dimension to these petals. I'm just kind of pressing my fingernail in there and just kind of folding up those petals a little bit. I'll do the same thing for all of these and for the leaves as well. There's that 3D foam tape. 
and we're going to just stack these up. So I'm just going to cut a few small chunks and place it right in the center. And again, this little flower will have a lot of dimension. So we can go ahead and pop this right in the center. Again, I'm just sculpting those petals just a little bit with my fingers there. And look how pretty this is. This I just love this. I think it's so beautiful. So for the pink tag, we'll be using those two pieces. And then for the green tag, I went ahead and die cut two more of that holly and berry border with the gold metallic cardstock. Next we have the Sizzix 3D Impresslets Snowflake. And this die cuts and embosses two snowflakes, one larger and one a little bit smaller. So for this, I'm just going back to my Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I went ahead and ran that through the die cutting machine. And now we can start to build up our tags. So I'm going to take some foam tape, that 3D foam tape, and I'm going to double it up because again, we're gonna create a little shaker window behind each of these bold text sentiments. So I'll double that up so we have enough room for our glitter. And I'm going to place this tape around the wording here, around this sentiment, all the way around. And you wanna make sure there's no gaps in the tape. So you wanna make sure you line everything up and that it all of the tape butts up against each other so that you have no gaps for your little embellishments to escape. So once I place the tape all around the sentiment, I added the double layer of foam tape on the rest of the tag. And now I've got some rock candy glitter from Tim Holtz. And this is this beautiful clear glitter. And then I've got my pink and main anti-static powder tool. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that on that acetate window, just so that my glitter doesn't stick to the front of that window and moves around nice and freely inside the little shaker area. So now I can go ahead and remove the backing on my tape. And you wanna do that carefully so that your glitter doesn't jump around on you there. And now I can line up that metallic tag. Again, I want the metallic side to be face down and I'm going to press these together. And you do wanna make sure you press nicely here, again, so that none of those embellishments escape from your shaker area. So I'm using a firm hand there just to press that down really well. And now you can see how pretty that is with that clear glitter inside. So I'll do the same thing for these other two. Let me give you a quick look at all of all of those done with that shaker element. So now let's grab the Zig two-way glue pen and I'm just going to press that nib down just to release some of that glue. And all this means is that this glue can be used in a couple of different ways. When it's blue and wet, it will create a permanent bond. But if you let it dry for a few minutes, you'll get a temporary bond, kind of like a post-it note kind of a bond. So you have a couple options there with this glue, which is really nice. But we're just going to put it on the high spots of our embossed snowflake and then sprinkle on some of that rock candy glitter. We'll tap off the excess and then that will give a nice sparkle to our snowflakes. And I'm using that 3D foam tape again and popping these up on my tag. So now let's add a few little embellishments. I've got some really pretty embellishments from Buttons Galore and more. And I will list and link all the products I'm using today down below and also on my blog. So you can just check there if there's anything you're interested in. You can just click and it will take you right to that product. So now I'm adding a few sequins to the centers of each of the snowflakes. And then I'm going to add a few of those little metallic-y snowflakes from this embellishment set randomly around the tag. And then on the center of each of those sequins, I'm going to add a couple of those little sparkly gems.
I'm using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to attach these, and I've got my Marvy Jewel Picker, which makes it really easy to pick up these little embellishments. So you can see that up close. Oh, and I did add a few little beads to the centers of each of those little snowflakes. So now I've got the pink tag. Let's go ahead and add that holly berry border. I'm just going to glue that down. And I was showing the, the back of that holly berry border is also just as pretty as the front. So either way, you can use it on either side. I just think both ways are pretty. So now let's go ahead and pop up the poinsettia. I'm just adding some more of that foam tape and we can center that on our tag. So to finish this tag off, let's add a few little gems from Pink Fresh Studio. These are the silver gems. And I'm gonna add one in the center of the poinsettia and then a few around the tag. Let's go over to this green tag and again I'm going to add plenty of glue to these two borders and I'll just place these a little bit apart from each other. What I'll go ahead and do is cut away some of that excess and we can certainly save some of that excess for our future projects so I'm going to set those aside. So let's go ahead and decorate the front of our, our tag. I'm using this beautiful poinsettia. Now this is a die cut and there's several die cuts in this worn wallpaper scraps collection. And there's also some borders and several pieces of beautiful Christmas cardstock. And this paper has a bit of a texture to it like wallpaper. It's got a little bit of that texture to it. So I'm going to grab these two pieces and I'm going to add this to the front of the tag. I'm just adding a little foam mounting tape. I'll remove the backing and position that on the front of the tag. And then I wanted to add a few little embellishments. So I've got some Pink Fresh Studio metallic gems, this time in the matte gold. So I'm going to add three tiny little ones to the center of the flower. And as I mentioned earlier, all of these products are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. So let's go ahead and take a look at our finished tags. And you can see the beautiful backgrounds we created with our oxide sprays and mica stains. And then we have these impresslets, which give that 3D look to our embellishments. And then that bold text. Again, those dies are from the brand new Christmas collection from Tim Holtz for 2022. And here we have some cute little embellishments. And then we have that cute shaker element in the background. And then that last one, we sprayed that mica spray combined with the oxide spray. And you'll see when I show you that up close, you get that beautiful mica finish on the entire background. So the entire background has that shimmer, and then you have that splattering as well. So you kind of get a little bit of mica in two different ways there. And then you have that beautiful framed border on each of the tags. So you could turn these into cards, Add them to a card or a journal page, or just use them as tags for your Christmas gifts. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thanks so much for joining me today. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.